Hello, hi and welcome to another episode of The Emma Gunn Show and a midweek instalment of Bullet Points. Going live much later than I'm used to and potentially you are used to. Because, dear listener, I managed to completely and utterly lose track of the week. I was working from home yesterday. I even have a note in my diary, Wednesday morning, bullet points. Make your notes, do all of the blah, blah, blah. And all day I kept thinking, yep, yep, do that tomorrow morning, do that tomorrow morning. And then I thought, oh, I'm having coffee with Emma Story Gordon, my amazing coach, also fantastic friend from the EC Method. Uh, I'll do it when I get back. And it was only this morning when I woke up thinking, have I got enough time to wash my hair before I meet Em, that I realized that the episode should have gone live. But I suppose part of me wanted to, or had already sort of earmarked my conversation with Emma as being relevant for this episode of Bullet Points. I just had it backwards in my head. But um, that's why I have come straight home from meeting Emma. We had a lovely coffee. We had a smashing walk through Battersea Park, which was really nice. It was so nice to see her. And I have immediately reapplied my lipstick, which we'll come on to later, and sat in front of the camera in order to make sure that I can publish this as soon as possible. Because the reason why my conversation with Emma was as significant was significant for this episode is because I've told you in the previous three episodes about the sort of um, confronting moment that um, prompted me to get in touch with Emma and say, look, please can I abuse my privilege of being your friend to ask a question on the EC podcast, EC Method podcast. Now, the EC Method is something that you sign up for and pay for. It's a two-month program. I did two rounds of it. I found it to be unbelievably helpful, helped me with my food goals, helped me with my physical goals, helped me with my brain, my mindset, so many wonderful things. And they are skills and tactics and tools that I use every single day. Um, And the podcast is free to listen to. So even though I'm not a paid up subscriber, I'm not currently following the plan as such. I mean, I am in a way, it's kind of become embedded. But I still check in every week Emma and Chloe do a live on Facebook. They take the audio and they turn that into a podcast. And so that's how I tune in to the EC method. And I wouldn't say it keeps me on track, but it, um, as somebody whose mind can get very convoluted and I can begin to believe things that aren't true when it comes to body image, food, performance goals, that kind of thing, it keeps me kind of rooted in some sort of reality and stops me spiraling out of control. Anyway, I emailed, I'm WhatsApp M a couple of weeks ago and said, look, I'm finding maintaining my weight really freaking dull. And it's making me think that I miss losing weight. So should I lose some more? I mean, it's not like I'm physical perfection. I could stand to lose some more weight. I could stand to build some more muscle, blah, blah, blah. And the response from Emma and Chloe was really wonderful because actually it was like, well, you're still acting as if you're in the weight loss phase. You're still tracking in the same way. You're still weighing yourself in the same way. You're still doing the same exercise. And of course, all of those three things that are fundamental to the weight loss process are important when you're trying to lose weight, but when you're not, they do become slightly less engaging. They do become boring because nothing's really happening. Like your calories probably aren't changing, your weight's not moving, and you're doing the same exercise, except the only thing that's missing now is you're not getting any results because you've gone through that process, you've gone through the part of that journey where you will lose weight. Once you get to a certain weight, weight loss is going to be slower, it's going to be harder. And also you're at a weight that you're comfortable at. So of course it's not gonna feel the same thing about a performance goal. And the reason why that was confronting for me as somebody who has struggled with binge eating and has always got it in the back of my mind that that could grab hold of me at any moment. The reason why that was so confronting is because by realizing, well, it's because I realized I was holding on to the behaviors that I got comfortable with when I was losing weight because I was scared of letting go. Because if I let go, I was worried that what was going to happen or what has happened previously was going to happen again, which was that I was going to gain weight. And the reason why that's scary is because previously when that has happened, it has been quick and I have ballooned. And it has felt like I've gone from one thing to one extreme to the other. And then I find myself back at square one. And so Emma and Chloe's suggestion was, first of all, to stop getting on the scale. So the first thing I said to Emma today was, I haven't weighed myself since you since you answered my question on your podcast. And I feel like I'm going through turbulence. And I know 
that I mustn't get on the scales, but it feels like everything around me is just turned to jelly. And that um, when I think, oh, maybe I'll just lose another five pounds and then I'll stop weighing myself. I realize that's like an alcoholic saying, I'll just have one more drink before I quit. Or someone who's smoking, uh, who's trying to give up smoking, say, I'll just have one more fag before I quit. I know it's bargaining, so I don't want to engage in behavior that I know is not is negative. And so it was just really nice to speak to Emma face to face and just sort of say, this is how I'm feeling. It's been quite confronting to realize that even though I'm not binging anymore, even though I'm not engaging in disordered eating, it was confronting to realize I'm engaging in disordered thinking about eating and that actually probably the hardest work starts now where I let go of the things that have been helpful. It is quite literally like, um, <laughs> just like having been, having had your hand held or having stabilizers or when you learn to drive and you're in the car with an instructor or, or a parent or a friend who's just there to kind of keep a watch on you. It's, the, it's like going for that drive on your own for the first time. And it's weird to think that I thought I'd come such a long way, but I had been using these mechanisms like the weighing scales to sort of anchor myself. And so Emma didn't really add anything to what she said on the podcast when we met today, but it was really nice just to see her nodding along and to say yep yep but you're thinking all the right things just you have got it and when I was trying to rationalize to her I was saying I have 18 months of data that shows that if I just eat in the way that I've been eating for the last 18 months if I just keep exercising not because I want to lose weight but because I really like exercising and I like feeling stronger I've got 18 months of data to show me that nothing will change and getting on the scales doesn't matter because surely those data points won't won't shift if my behaviors stay the same but it feels very nerve-wracking not to have that weighing check-in and I was kind of seeing if she would say oh you know get on once a week or maybe once a month but none of that was forthcoming and I didn't ask the question so this feels this does feel like the um this does feel like a harder piece of work than the actual losing because it's about finding an equilibrium. And previously there has been something keeping that balance and now that has gone away and I have to do that myself. So that was um, a really important conversation. I'm really grateful to Emma for just kind of hearing me out. It was really nice to catch up with her anyway. If you are someone who's listened to this stuff that I've said about body image or weight loss or um, body confidence, although I'm not sure that really applies. But anyway, if any of it chimes with you and you've ever thought, I want to make changes, but I don't know how. And you think that having a little bit of support might help. I really can't recommend the EC method enough. I really, really can't. It isn't just Emma and Chloe, who are your coaches. When you join, you get access to a Facebook group. And that Facebook group is the best community. Like if I'd wake up in the morning and feel a little unmotivated, or maybe back in the weight loss phase, I had got on the scales and I wasn't seeing any shifting to be able to just go into that group and say, hey, I've got, this is where I'm at. The amount of people who come back and say, yep, you're totally right. This is a really normal part of the journey or keep going or try this. The support and community in that group, in the method is great. And there are people who've been there years who just stay in, stay in the group and are brilliant and reset their goals or add a performance goal or make different. It's such a lovely place. So um, if any of this has ever chimed and you've thought, I, I actually want to make a difference, I cannot recommend the EC method enough. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, we're going to take a hard right here. You may notice that I am wearing, <laughs> looking at myself in the viewfinder, you may notice that I am wearing a beautiful lipstick. <laughs> And that is because one of the deliveries that arrived this week, and I was so excited. There are a few brands that get me really excited. One of them is Vive by Jamie Genevieve. I mean, there are, I cannot think of a single product from Jamie that hasn't blown my socks off and that I don't love wearing. Most recently, the uh, Skin Nova what is it, found complexion, the Skin Nova Complexion Balm, which is her first foundation. It is absolutely this buttery, beautiful, radiant, but it's just lasts all day. It's absolutely wonderful. And a very generous tube as well. Vive, 
Viv is just a brand I absolutely love and I get excited about. When I know that there's a launch coming, I think, oh! like for example, recently they launched the collection Paint the Town Red and I wasn't sure about red. I really wasn't. And then Jamie formulates these blushes in this lipstick. The lipstick in Hickey, by the way, is absolutely sensational. It's one of her silky ones. I forgot the satin slip ones. But it's absolutely wonderful. It's got the most beautiful kind of glossy finish that kind of but really sticks. The pigment really sticks. It's lovely. So Viva is a brand I get very excited about. Another brand I get totally excited about is KJH brand. So Katie Jane Hughes makeup line. She only has a couple of products. She has the Hyper Shine kit. And she also recently launched the Soft Smudge Lip and Cheek Sticks. And she very kindly sent me Soft Coral and Soft Raisin. And up until today, I think I've had them a week. It is all I have worn. I went away for the weekend. I just took both. I On a day when I wasn't doing very much, just doing lots of walking, I wore coral when I wanted to be a bit more dressed up. I wore this off raisin. They are absolutely beautiful. So I get very excited when I know that Katie's got something up her sleeve. Another brand, Reason. The Reason Bronzing Balm is one of the best beauty products I have ever used, genuinely. I use bronze when my skin's a bit paler. And if I just want to add a little bit of something and bronze intense when I want to really ramp up that color, or if indeed I've used a bit of tan or I've got some color from the sun myself, it is one of those products that is so easy to use. I actually am going to do a video on the medicinal benefit of Reason Bronzing Balm because I was feeling quite blue the other day and I woke up on, I think it was on a Sunday morning and I just thought, oh, today might be a day just to sit, sit in bed. It just, I just felt very, oof. and I thought, no, don't do that. Wash your hair, put some makeup on. And you know when you kind of get a, a gust of energy and you think, yeah, yeah, okay, I will get up. But then when it comes to it, you don't have enough energy to do very much. And all I did was just put some brown mascara on and some reason. And then I looked in the mirror and I thought, oh, suddenly got a suddenly got a burst of energy because I liked how I looked. And it was simply the mascara and the reason bronzing balm. So I do believe there is a medicinal element or a me medicinal element benefit I should say to the reason bronzing mom I just think it's absolutely glorious and another brand that just gets me going just gets me very very excited is Lisa Eldridge now what all of those brands have in common with the exception of reason is that they are makeup artist founded although uh, Re is obviously one of the most prolific and most successful beauty bloggers in Europe potentially the world and so I sort of almost feel like she's done a lot of the testing. She's done so much wear testing. She's famous for her swatches. So the fact that she has stumbled across and created, not stumbled across, that's really patronizing, but the fact that she has formulated a product that exceeds all expectations, that brings a new type of formula and finish and texture to the market, and it is so perfect, is not a surprise. And Lisa Eldridge has just been bringing absolute banger after absolute banger to market since she launched and the most recent one is rouge this rouge experience so this is this refillable very beautiful absolutely sort of precious you pick up the lipstick and it's this it's so clever as well because you can you basically buy the lipstick with your color in you can get it personalized so you can put your initials on the bottom mine's got eg and you can then just switch out the top, switch out the bottom and put the, a new component part with the bullet inside. And it's all aluminium. So it's all entirely recyclable. A lot of um, lipstick componentry contains plastic or it's different, several different materials. This is all aluminium and it's the most beautiful, ornate, very weighty lipstick. And Lisa very kindly sent me three colors. So I have ribbon, which is that beautiful intense red Audrey which is a salmon pink and Lisa which I'm wearing if you're watching on YouTube you'll be able to see which is this just sort of absolutely gorgeous neutral wearable pink and I've worn it on my lips and I also used it as blusher it is so buttery soft I put it on this morning at about nine o'clock I actually filmed the video it's the first time I've ever used it and I thought do you know what? I'm just going to film a video first impressions if you like and then went out to meet Emma, got a couple of trains to, to get over to Battersea, had a long walk, drank a coffee, got on the train home about, I don't know, three and a half hours later, 
just my phone case is mirrored and I looked and it had barely budged. So this is a very buttery, non-drying, sort of sumptuous pigment. And what I mean by sumptuous pigment is that kind of pigment that looks like it's enhancing the lips, giving you sort of almost like a plumping quality to it. And it had feathered ever so slightly, not feathered, but it had obviously worn a little bit around the edges where I'd been licking my lips, where I'd had my coffee, because obviously I had to have an oat milk latte. But I was so impressed. So then when I came to film this video, all I had to do was just do one sweep on the bottom, one sweep on the top. I got a little bit of the 2C lip liner, which is the Lisa Eldridge Sculpt and Shade. I think it's Sculpt and Shade lip liner, just to make my lips a little bit fuller. But I... I'm just absolutely blown away by the the beauty of the packaging, the intelligence of the componentry so that the entire thing is recyclable. And there's a brilliant video that Lisa's done on her YouTube where not only does she demo all of the colors and the colors are absolutely stunning, but she also tells you how best to recycle because it's all very well and good saying such and such is recyclable, but if you don't quite know how, and the other thing which I think is really smart is the thing I said about every single component part being aluminium is that a lot of brands, when they realized that being green or sustainable was trendy, if you like, they made some changes, but they didn't make changes to the entire thing. So there might be a new element that was recyclable, but actually in order to recycle that packaging, you had to take everything apart or you couldn't actually just throw the lot in the recycling because it was only 75% of the packaging that was actually recyclable. So the, the fact that it's all recyclable is very, and aluminum and recyclable is just so, so clever. But I have been on my first wear so impressed with this particularly kind of soft, buttery, enhancing texture. And of course, the pigments are beautiful. I just think this is so flattering. So if you are in the market for Christmas, either you want something extravagant and wonderful, then definitely put this on your wish list and make sure you get that, uh, your initials engraved on the bottom. Or if you're thinking about something special for somebody else, then there are some brilliant neutral shades. You could really take a punt if you wanted to get someone something special. You could get it for someone else. And it really shows... It really just shows a lot of thought and it's just very beautiful. So I was using that this morning and thinking, oh, that's really exciting. And then when I was in the mood, as the mood seems to take me, I also filmed a video of me using the Dyson. But instead of using the Dyson Air, not Air Straight, the Dyson Air Wand. Is that right? It's not Air Wand, is it? I've suddenly had a whew, Air Wrap. There you go. I um, normally start with the Air Wrap by sort of at the bottom of my hair but I saw someone I think I saw Victoria McGrath actually on one of her videos wrap the hair around from the root and I thought I'm going to give that a go and you'll see what I mean if you look at my Instagram the video I'll be up in a few days but essentially I air wrapped my hair and I was just completely blown away at the fact that just using something I've been using for months just ever so slightly differently can get such a different result and I always brush out the waves so that I get if you get if you're watching on YouTube it's more of a a shape as opposed to waves because it I didn't use a lot of styling product. If I'd used a lot of styling product, I would have got something a lot bouncier. But I was really impressed at being able to use something I've had for a while, just there so slightly differently to get a slightly more sort of um, volumized, bouncy, blowout kind of a look as opposed to those long curls. So keep your eye on my Instagram because there's some videos coming soon. Um, what else have I got to tell you this week? I don't think there is a huge amount other than, truth be told, I am sitting here and I know that in 15 minutes it's going to start getting dark and it's not even 3.30 yet. It is so, it has been such a shock to the system, the clock's going back. And I can't lie, it has been, I feel like a bit of a Debbie Downer, I feel like a bit of a misery at the moment because the days feel so short that um, I do think it has, I do think it has effect, affected my mood but reassuringly, I have spoken to quite a few friends this morning and yesterday just saying, we've just been talking about all sorts of things and everyone has said, oh, this time change has hit me like a dump truck. It has been so challenging this week. And I think it's because it has suddenly gone very, very dark. So I'm going to be on the next episode thinking about the things that we can do when it is a bit darker and it can feel as though you get robbed of these massive portions of the day where you can be productive. I'm going to try to think of some productivity tips to share with you 
things that you can do where it doesn't matter what time of day it is. So maybe you can like maximize your evening because I don't know about you, but when it gets darker in the summer, I don't even think I really sit down till about nine o'clock, maybe even 10 o'clock because I'm sort of buzzing around. But now I'm finding that at five o'clock, I think, oh, let's get under a blanket and watch some reality TV, which is unlike me. So I'm thinking, no, there's like a good three hours of productivity that I'm missing out on simply because it's got dark outside. And for some reason, it's like I've not navigated a time change before. So between now and the next episode, I'm going to think of some hopefully useful productivity tips. Um, and speaking of, I recently posted on my Substack about the five changes that you can make to actually not feel so jarred by the time change. How ironic that I wrote that and then I felt more jarred by this one than any other before, but there we go. I have implemented all of these things, but I think I need a bit of a boost and a bit of a push, which is why I'm um, going to be thinking about these productivity hacks for the next episode. But if you have any questions about productivity, about weight, about any of those things, please don't hesitate. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I encourage you to put a little note saying whether you enjoyed it, whether you hated it, whether you like my top, whether you like my lipstick, pop it in the comments below. Um, and don't forget that you can email me on office at emmaguns.com and I'd be delighted to hear from you or go over to Instagram and DM me if that feels more comfortable and less of a hassle. I am at Emma Guns over there. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Bullet Points. I will see you on the next one. <laughs>